Call from Spooky. Hey, is this Spooky? Yes. Uh, what's up, Spooky? I just... This is... Okay, I know we just met. This is really inappropriate, probably, for therapy... Um, for, like, therapists to, like, um, patients. I just want to squish your little tummy. You want to squish my tummy? Yeah, it's so cute. Um... Why? It's just so cute and round. I just, it's just like, I feel like you could lay on it. And I feel like if you dropped at a, at like a, a, um, a fast enough velocity, um, your head would bounce a couple times. It just looks really nice. Your head would, like my head would bounce or that if you. No, mine. If I were to figuratively drop my head on your tummy, mm -hmm. it would bounce. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you Is have that okay to say? So you have this feeling um, that you you want to squish my belly. Um, yeah. And, 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 and it, yeah. And it seems like a rather intense feeling. Yeah, it is. I had to call. I've just, I've been trying to call for so long. I'm your biggest fan. I well, okay. I started watching you like ten minutes ago, but I really like you. And what do you do? What do you do with this intense feeling? If you have nowhere to nowhere to put it, how do you? I mean, what do you what do you what do you what do you do with this? Well, right now you're <laughs> you're on. Um, I have two monitors, and um, to to ease it uh, to ease the pain a bit, I have you on both on both screens. <laughs> one one is on um in um Internet Explorer, and the other one's on Chrome. You have me on Internet Explorer and Chrome. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you just make two tabs on one browser instead of two browsers? Does that work? Yes. Uh, can I still see you on both monitors? All I see is you when I look forward. Are you setting it up so that you see me no matter what direction you look in? Yes. Okay, because you're going to need more monitors for that. Yes, I know. Hold on, let me go order some. What do you use? I just have a laptop. Oh. You have nice cheeks, too. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have any dark secrets? Not that I would be willing to tell you. Why not? I don't know if I trust you with my dark secrets. Oh, you can trust me, Gek. That's just your name, right, Gek? <laughs> or is it Lyle? Who's Lyle? <laughs> you believe that you're trustworthy? Yes. Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and what is it about yourself that makes you believe that? Um, <clears throat> uh, one time my friend told me um, that she... You know, if I told you, it would be a secret. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, so tell me a secret. I've never been in love. Don't stop looking at me like that. <laughs> oh, you have enough? <laughs> You're lying. Maybe once. I was real young. But I don't know if that was love. I might have been too young for that to have been love. When I was in um, second grade, I was in computer class. And um, there was this girl and this boy in the corner. They weren't at their computers. They were in the corner staring at each other and looking down. And I was like, what are they doing? So then I went up to them. And they were showing each other their, you know. And I think that that was the only time I saw real love. You think they were in love? Yes, I do. See, I don't know if I mean I don't know. I don't think I don't know if that was love. I feel like that might have been either. Well, depending on I how young they were, it sounds like it was more of an act of curiosity than anything else. Oh yeah, they did get in trouble. They did get caught, but that was the first time I ever saw foreskin. <laughs> is is this something that you think about often? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I 
remember it vividly. Yeah. I was like, wow, it's like a meat suit. <laughs> Oh, your tummy is so cute. I'm so glad I'm talking to you right now. We can play the question game. I don't know what that is. Okay, I'll start. Um, what's your favorite color? Green. <laughs> no. What are you saying? Spooky. Thank you so much what? for sharing, Spooky. I hope you have a good rest of the night. What? Don't leave me. I love you. Therapy Kit goes on the line. Taking your phone calls every night. Therapy Kit goes to an He's Teaching you how to live your life. But he's not really an expert. Hello? What's up? How's it going? This is Alex. Alex. And Courtney. And my wife, Courtney. And his wife, Courtney. It's like when you go to the claw machine and you get two presents. Two for one. I know. Double prizes. Double prizes, exactly. So we're, we're calling you tonight because we, we need advice from an impartial third party. I just farted. Um, yeah, hit me. We got, I ha we have this wonderful cat, Frida. She's this black cat. She's very sweet. She brings us much happiness. I love her. I picked her. Courtney thinks that we need to have this cat for the rest of our lives. And by that, I mean, when Frida dies, she wants to have the cat taxidermied and keep the cat's skeleton. Not the fur, because it's kind of creepy. But I like the skeletons of cats. And I think it might be nice to keep Frida forever. I think that this is fuck fucking wild and that we should not keep the cat skeleton. Hmm. Um, well, I mean, I think the perfect way to start this off is I'd like to hear um, Courtney's reasons as to why uh, she wants to keep the skeleton. And then and then I would like to hear your reasons as to um, why we should not keep the keep the skeleton. So, Courtney, tell me um, pros for the skeleton. Um, so I love oddities. So I collect a lot of oddities. Like I have a necklace with a mouse skull on it. Um, I, I'm right now starting a bug collection and I know it's kind of freaky and weird. Um, but I really would love to have a cat skeleton sitting like in a case. And I would really love for it to be I love that personal. you're talking, by the way, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I love that you're talking about, is the cat still alive, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. I love that you're just, you're just staring at the old. cat like, I'd love to have a cat skeleton in a case one day. I, if I were that cat, I'd be scared shitless. <laughs> anyway, continue. Yeah. I, I love this cat, and I'm just like, why would I not? Like... I think it would, I think it would add to my oddities collection, and it would have a story behind it instead of saying, "Hey, I just got this cat, cat skeleton from someone else." I don't know; it's a stray cat. Like I would love to say it was, um, you know, a cat that was loved for years. Okay, that's um, those are reasons. Now, um, what's your name? What's what's uh, Courtney? What's your husband's name? Alex. Alex. Alex, representing the side of throw the cat skeleton away. Give me right. give me give me your argument. So our argument, my argument, the argument on the side of uh what I would propose is probably the norm. Um when the cat dies we want to show it respect by either burying or cremating it. Um the better argument, though, I feel, is because Courtney and I are talking about having kids in the next couple of years. And so this cat is two. 
meaning that we are going to have a baby and the cat will still be alive. And then the baby will get older and will probably be around five or six years old when, when Frida actually dies. And so I think it would be extremely traumatic to, number one, not only have your child have to go through learning what death is, uh, but number two, also constantly reminding the child what death is and that uh, your bones will just end up on display somewhere. Courtney, let me ask you something. Yeah. Let's say you have a kid. Okay. And the kid dies. <laughs> Damn. You keeping the skeleton? Okay. But I wasn't planning on having a kid skeleton in my room. I just wanted a cat skeleton. So that's your line. Well, we've established okay. a limit. Yeah, this is a good place to start. I think a dog is too far too. A dog yeah, is I too far. I should mention we have two dogs, and she doesn't want either of their skeletons. I don't. Okay, so no kid skeleton, no dog skeleton, but the cat. We want the cat this skeleton. Cat. Maybe some mice. That would be fun. Hmm. <laughs> See, I don't. Are these, the lines to me, they feel. The lines feel arbitrary to me for some reason. I like, like, like. Why? Why would you keep the skeleton of the cat, but not the dog or the kid? Is it too large? I'm oh, so sorry, it's a logistics kids, thing. You don't have enough space for it keep the on the wall. The kid. Hmm. What? Okay. I'm trying to think here. Who oh bought God, the cat? Whose cat is it? It's mine. She got the cat, but the cat likes me more because I don't want to taxidermy the cat. Hmm. Damn it. Mm. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. But, huh. I mean, look, if it's at the end of the day, if it's Courtney's cat, then she can get a taxidermy. That's the problem with with, mm -hmm. with with animals is that we can't we don't know what they want when they die, mainly because they don't right. know that they're gonna right. die. All no animal knows that it's gonna die. That's a, knowing that That's they're gonna true. die is unique to humans. The thing about you don't want your child to know about death. I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe it's good to always think about death. I think in the I mean in the adult life, I mean, I think it, it's always good to think about death because it makes I you around. you know think about life. I how important up, it is. I grew up around taxidermy things. So I I feel like it's normal. Like a lot of people were in Texas, so a lot of people have deer skulls and whatnot and we already have them. But it's not their pets around our house. It's not their pet deer. True, but it's still a skeleton. And I, you know, I have no no problems with teaching our children about death. It's just a constant reminder. Put the cat on the line. Can we get the cat on the line? No, it's going to be useless. Yeah. Cats can't talk. I don't, I don't um, know if she'll talk, but we can hold her yeah, up. Yeah, she probably no, she won't talk. I mean, look. She can't talk. Yeah, here's her jingle. I mean, look, yeah. I'm team. I am team that at the end of the day, the cat should decide. But that's this is a dilemma here because the cat cannot talk. Um, so I don't, I mean, That's look, true. do I think you should keep this cat skeleton? Okay, if the cat can't talk, then the cat's owner has to be representative of the cat's wishes. And if it is Courtney's cat, then at the end of the day, she gets to decide what to do. And that's who gets to decide. But in terms of, like, what do I overall believe should be done? I think bury the cat. But at the end of the day, Courtney gets to decide. So what do you would it be more moral to have a cat that's not affiliated with us? Like, to buy a cat from someone that's already taxidermied and it's, like, a cat that I don't know? You just really would it want be better? a cat skeleton. This doesn't... It could be any cat for I you. Do. You just want, want it as part of your skeleton. collection. I do. You're a supervillain in the making, by the way. <laughs> this is some... This is, this is like, well, Disney this villain... Hero, this is so. Cruella de Vil behavior. That you're exhibiting. 
But don't tell you me know, look, I, I wish you guys the best of luck, and um, you know, I mean, the I I what's the name of the cat, Frida? I I I I, I wish Frida the best. Here's here's what I okay, I'll leave you with this. At, just save it until the cat dies, because it's rude to the cat to be talking about if you're going to keep its skeleton when it dies while it's still alive. Wait for it to die first, at least, before you have this argument. Okay, do, do that. Got, That's what I, I'll say. I got you. Beautiful. Thank you guys Thank very you much. Again. Have a good rest of the night. All right, thanks. Thanks for your time. Hello? Hello? What's up? Are you ready for a shit show? Am I ready for a shit show? Correct. Uh, I, I'd like to think I'm ready for anything. I know it's probably not okay. true, but... Let me... Oh, no, it really is. Okay. Hit me. Let me try to break it down slowly. Um, my Let's husband and I moved out to the wonderful state of Missouri uh, in 2019. And he was being a dumbass and wasn't being... I guess you could say doing the right thing or treating me right at the same time. So he wasn't learning and he was manufacturing firearms. So I turned his ass into the ATF and he went away for a little vacay for about 18 months. He's now been home for a little over a month and we're trying to rebuild things. But in that year and a half that he's been gone, I should also state I'm a recovering alcoholic, had a son that died, didn't cope with it well, went to drinking, did stupid shit. I've been in therapy now for a long time, been working on myself, just got a scholarship for my bachelor's degree. I've got a 4.0 right now. So how do you, what do you think are good methods or therapies to uh, work on this and try to rebuild it? So you turned your husband in for illegally manufacturing Correct. firearms. Yes, I did. And was he upset with you? Um, no, he knew that I had done it. And I should also add he had pulled one on me prior, which is why he got turned in. He pulled a gun on you. Yes. What he's, what he's what, is, what is the, the what is the what is the context of that situation? Um, I went to go get it so he wouldn't use it, and he grabbed it. And this was um, and he after he had put a zip tie around his neck. Yes. Yeah, that is a uh, a red flag. He's in the room right now. I just want to add that too. He's he's in he's in the group, so he's part of this conversation. What's his name? Uh, Brad Scholes. Brad Scholes. You don't have to give me his full name. Well, that's his his username in the room right now. Wait, when you say he's in the room, do you mean he's with you? Uh, he's in the room and he's also watching the stream. He's the one who who suggested that I call in. Okay, so a year and a half ago, your husband pulled a gun on you. And you you told the police this? Yeah. W what did they tell you to do? Um, They basically didn't do shit, um, to be honest, which was why I went above them and went to the feds. And he knew that he knows that I turned him in. That's no secret. Um, he actually says it's probably the best thing I could have done because he learned from it. And he said that it was good because got him out of doing stupid shit because honestly if i if i wouldn't have done that and we have we have children together it just would have gotten worse so you're telling me that you uh, have been in real therapy for how long um i've been in therapy since well on and off 20 years but continuous since 2019 okay so uh when you told all this stuff to your have you had the same therapist for 20 years uh, no, I've had the same therapist for the last two. Okay. When you tell all this stuff to your therapist, what do they tell you? Uh, it's it's all different mix. It's, you know, do you want to work things out? Do you think it can be saved? Um, you know, evaluating him as a person. Like, overall, he's a good person. He really is. He just has 
And no, he doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs. Um, he just has I mean, a really, you, really I mean, shitty I mean, what, what's your name again? Wendy. Wendy, when you told your therapist that your husband pulled a gun on you, was he th- and he was threatening you? I also told the police that. Yeah, I told the police that, too. Okay, okay. what did your therapist tell you to do? <sighs> well, the first thing was to file a restraining order and take a break, which we did. Okay. Um, then we got gotten back together after that time period. And ATF was still investigating. It took him about six months from the time that I had turned him in until he was actually picked up. So by the time he was picked up in February of 2020, we were actually doing a lot better. Like our relationship was getting stronger, it was healthier, things were going the right way. And then he got locked up for 18 months. Okay. And now, and now he's out of prison and you're back with him. And what um, what does your therapist think about that? Uh, she thinks it's risky. She thinks it's scary. Um, we have safety plans implemented just in case. Okay. But I I I, I, mean, so far, I, I, I personally agree with your therapist. Why now? Has your therapist told you when your therapist told you to file a restraining order against this guy, and? You did. You filed a restraining order against him. Yes. <clears throat> okay, but you have since redacted that. Uh, oh yeah, I, I did that too. But the main reason that he got—I know people are—I've I've read the room, and people are saying it's not illegal for you to build guns. Correct, it's not. But he has a restraining order from his first wife that prohibited from owning any firearms or ammunition, which was why he got in trouble. Okay, so your therapist told you that this was risky and that it's unsafe. And I assume she told you that you shouldn't be with this guy. She didn't exactly say not to. She just wanted me to really evaluate the pros and the cons and assess the different risks, obviously. Okay. And tell me what's going through your head as you're assessing these risks. Uh, To be honest, in the beginning, I was like, F no. Um, Scared. Didn't want to do it. But then over time, as I was talking to him while he was locked up, I could sense, you know, he was changing. He wasn't the same type of person as he was when he was here, which, you know, of course, my first thought was, this is just typical prison talk. Like, they're going to sweet talk you while they're there and kiss ass and whatever, and then they're going to come out, and it's going to be the same shit all over again. But since he's been out, and he's only been out for like a month, a little over a month now, and... So far, he's he's actually, from what I can tell, he's he's actually really trying. So that's that's where I'm trying to see, you know, how do you, do you have any suggestions as to possibly bridge the gap or maybe to help rebuild trust? I mean, other than just you know time and patience. Well, this is totally. Well, I'll tell you. I mean, I'm not a real therapist. This is you know totally totally not you know something that that I'm 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 really uh, equipped to like help you with i i would i would i would you know advise you to take deeply into consideration everything that your real therapist tells you especially when she's telling you that this is pretty risky and unsafe you know um i mean you're 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 real therapist and it sounds it sounds as though all of the counsel that you've sought from legitimate you know mental health professionals and uh uh you know social health professionals and whatnot have have told you to get a restraining order against this guy i mean i definitely would if i needed to again but like i said i'm i'm hoping that we're past that point and so far there hasn't been anything that's even been remotely like what it was so and like i said he's literally in the room so like people who are commenting he can he can post and say hi, but I mean he's hearing this, he's reading it, he's he's like I said, he's the one who suggested for me to call in, so I did. All I'll say all I'll say to you is I uh, you know, look, I, uh, again, like I no one no one can force you to do anything, right? You're your own person, you know, but um, That's true. I, I, I'll tell you, if, if you're going to therapy, if you're seeking professional help from people, 
I, I, I'll, I'll, I, I, you know, I'm not a real therapist, you know. I'll, I'll tell you, like, you lis listen to whatever the professionals are telling you. and Take it deep into consideration, you know, because no, no one can force you to do anything. But, you know, re really consider, you know, the... the you know the the safest option. I mean, if you want my personal opinion, I, I think you should stay far the fuck away from this guy. I think you should find a, a different relationship, or or even rather, spend some time you know on your own, you know, figuring things out. That's my personal opinion. Um, no, and I, I think that's a was a good way and a good start, you know, especially for the the eighteen months that I was apart. Like I said, I went through therapy and got myself in the school and I've been working on improving myself and doing that sort of thing. So no, it's definitely, yeah, I'm, I'm learning that, but well, what'd you say I will was? stop Wendy. taking your. <laughs> well, listen, Wendy, stay safe. Um, continue to consult with, with professionals about this and, and continue to heed their guidance. That's what I'll tell you. Okay. Well, thank you. Anytime. Thank you, Wendy. Call from Alexandria. Alexandria. Oh my god, no way. How are you? How am I? Yeah, how are you? Wait, am I actually on? Alexandria. It's a long name. Does anyone ever just call you Alex or does it always Alexandria? When your when um, dinner's ready, I... does your mom go Alexandria? <laughs> come down Only for when dinner. I was in trouble. <laughs> what? Only when I was in trouble. Only when you were in trouble. When's... Yeah, I go by Allie. You shortened Alexandria to Allie. Mhm. Mm That's uh, incorrect. Allie is short for <laughs> Allison. Oh, okay. I guess I should change my name. No, that you should change the shortening. Because here's the thing: is changing your name. It's why the shortening. There's no le There's no paperwork involved in changing the shortening of your name. That's sort of, that's sort of Nick. It's a <laughs> Nick name. The shortening and the shortening. You don't. You no one ever has to legally change their nickname. So you can. I think you should change the shortening to Alex. Oh, you. But think Allie Alex? is short for uh, Alexandra. That doesn't make any sense. Because Allie is oh. short for Allison. I guess I've been living wrong my entire life. No, I don't think you've been living. You're, you're taking <laughs> everything I'm saying too literally. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. But what was your topic for tonight? Was Have you ever been in trouble? Yes. I have a story. Um, I'm actually banned from Canada because um, <laughs> I went on a trip. And we were coming back, and it was with my boyfriend at the time. And we had, like, weed in the car or something like that. And the drug dogs, like, were like, oh, they smelled it. And I got in trouble because they were like, do you have anything in your pocket? And I was like, no. And then they held it up in front of the entire, like, there was, like, this little waiting room of other people. There was, like, 40 people in there, and they held it in front of it, and it was super embarrassing. And then we're like, well, technically you're not allowed back in until I get something cleared. And then I'm actually not allowed on any military bases either. So my you tried to bring weed into Canada, and now you're banned. No, home from Canada. Yeah. So what? Yeah. So <laughs> you tried to bring weed home from Canada. So why would that ban you from Canada? That should ban you from the U.S. Oh well, it was like because we were sneaking it over or something like that, and they said we were because I'm from um, New York, and we were coming from there, and they said that I wasn't allowed because I was technically smuggling drugs <laughs> over the border. No, you were you were smuggling drugs over the border. <laughs> I know. Hmm. But I didn't think we would get caught because it was like the only because we've been like numerous times before, and this is the only day the dogs are there, and one of the only times I actually like took stuff back, and I got in trouble. Why did you take? We ha there's plenty of weed. I can. You want me to call my friend uh, <laughs> Noah? I have a friend. His name is Noah. He sells weed. Oh, sure. I can call him for you. Oh, it's okay. way easier. He lives in the Amer he lives this, in America. <laughs> this was a couple of years ago. I haven't tried to go back since. 
So how much weed were you trying to st- steal from Canada? Or not steal, I guess you um, did you buy the weed and then pr- take you... It's more of a smuggle than a steal. Yes. Yeah, and then I also had this little, little bong that I brought from my house. And they found it. And it, it was all broken. Like, I duct taped it together. And they were like, where did you get this? I was like, uh, in Canada? No, like, you did not get this in Canada. Mm. So then I got in trouble for that, too. You know, I will say... Um... Alexandria that <laughs> I think smuggling I don't I don't really I don't I you know I was talking earlier does the law define morality smuggling I don't think should be a thing it shouldn't be we shouldn't have to smuggle I mean look we have the earth right yeah and you're telling me that some fucking guy in some office is telling me that I can't take stuff from one place to another place it's all just stuff on the earth Borders are exactly. man-made illusions, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, good good on you for that, um, for, I guess, smuggling something to prove that point. <laughs> it was only, like, two joints, too. Like, it was completely bald. Have you since given there up smoking like the... weed? Um, no. <laughs> are you high right now? <laughs> um... Yeah, actually, I took a dab before this, and I was, like, so in shock when you answered. I was like, oh, my God. Get out of here. Get out of here, Alexandria. <laughs> They're going to come for me next. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Have a good day. Being high on my stream. What are you doing? We can't let the feds see me like this. We can't let the feds find us. The cops are going to shut. If they see a talking gecko on the computer, they're going to shut us down immediately. Call from... Jay and Alex. Hello? Hello? Hello. What's going on? I got a crazy story, though. I see you have a crazy um, story, you said. Yeah. What's so crazy about it? Okay. Well, so, I mean, I guess when I asked if I ever got in trouble, um, so a couple years back, uh, I was battling a coke addiction, and... I remember one day, my mom texted me out of nowhere, out of the complete blue, and she was hounding me. She was like, my name's Alex. She was like, Alex, are you on, are you doing anything? Like, Alex, tell me right now, whatever. And after enough, like, interrogation, I was like, oh, you know, it's just nicotine. She was like, I know that's not it. And I was like, okay, fine, weed. And then she was pushing me some more. And she was like, I know that's not it. And I was like, okay, alcohol, whatever. And she was like, cut the bullshit. Are you going to pass a drug test? And I was like, no. And then she was like, tell me why not. And I was like, because I like, smoked earlier today, whatever. She was like, I'm going to drive right down there right now. Um, the issue being is that, like, fun fact, Coke stays in your system for two days. And I was doing it the night before. So I was like, fuck, you know. So I finally gave in and was like, yeah, I was doing Coke, like, at a party, whatever. And, um... I asked my sister how the hell she knew, I guess, because it just weirded me out that she was pressing me so much until I actually, like, said that. And long story short, um, my sister was telling me how my mom reached out to a medium, like a psychic. They were emailing back and forth, and she was giving her insight on, like, our family and stuff because we had some, like, issues going on at the time, so she needed some, like, you know, I don't know, closure or whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, she was just like, your son is battling... uh, with substance abuse or something like that. So, yeah. So a psychic. Yeah. Told like, your mother no, that yeah. uh, you were battling with substance addiction. Yeah. How do you think she knew? The psychic? I'm not sure. Um, she got it from like a family friend, like the psychic. And, you know, I don't know. It, it baffles me. This happened years ago, and I still don't know why or how. I mean, she's good at her job, I guess. Do you believe in psychosis? I don't know, man. After that, I feel like I kind of, you know, kind of have to almost. So, so, so these days, this was three years mm-hmm. ago, you said. Yeah. Just about. Like Coke? No, um, I actually went to rehab from, I would say, the end of February to the end of April. 
Um, That's nice. Yeah, I've been pretty clean since then. Do you go to school? Yeah, actually. What do you do? Um, I'm majoring in fashion design and merchandising. I'm a freshman right now, though. I just started fashion my semester. Fashion design and merchandising? Yeah. You gonna get into the fashion industry? I mean, that's the plan. Just why starting out the. Uh, why, why do I feel like? That? Why do I feel like there's a lot of people who do cocaine in the fashion industry? Um, I don't know, man. Honestly, I just think I I really couldn't answer that. I, I don't know, cause I don't know. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I, I mean, right? It. Like it would make sense. No, it does. It does. I'm. But now that you ask, I'm just like stumped because all my friends are into fashion, like do coke. So I, <laughs> I, I don't know, man. What's um? What's your like dream piece of clothing that you want to design? Good question. Um, I'm not sure. I've been taking a lot more inspiration from like avant garde, which is like high end, like more abstract fashion, uh, usually dramatized. Uh, but or I mean, I don't know. I guess for now, I'm just like producing and distributing streetwear um i guess some kind of piece that would just you know be up there with the big names would be a pretty cool pretty cool thing what's the, what's your brand what's it called um it's called agony kind of gay but <laughs> i'm working on it um it's not like uh an official thing yet i, I just kind of do commissions here and there it's called Agony? Yeah. It's pretty hardcore. Thanks. <laughs> well, good luck to you. Um, what did you say your name was? My name is Alex. Alex. I hope to be, um, you know, wearing some, uh, I don't know, I don't really uh, wear any clothes. Yeah, I can see that. But... I don't know, maybe you'll make something one day that I'm like, oh, I gotta start wearing clothes now. Because of this okay, thing. Okay, well. You're sweet. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Anytime. Have a good night. You too, see ya. Hello? Hey. <laughs> What's up? Hey, um... What, <laughs> what's your opinion on BDSM? Um, when you, when you ask my opinion on BDSM, are you saying, are you asking me, like, um, my own, like, do I like BDSM, or asking me, like, my general opinion of it as a whole, like, in general? Uh, both. Both. <laughs> um, I don't know, I've never been tied up or tied anyone up or, or anything like that, um... Uh, I don't think I've personally ever tried it. I took the test. I actually, I took the test. You know, the BDSM test. Okay. Thing? <laughs> what, the test. what were you? I'm pretty vanilla. What were you? Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I'm I, asking I think that's what I got. because, yeah, I'm I'm partially vanilla too. But I'm asking because um, I kind of like found this dom i guess <laughs> but i've been struggling with whether it's healthy or not <laughs> whether it's healthy or not yeah like whether it's i don't know like is it a healthy relationship to have someone telling you what to do even if it's something positive you know well i mean if it's something you're into and you know it's you know obviously it's a consensual then i i, I don't <laughs> yeah. see anything wrong all right cool <laughs> i'm like really new to it so i was kind of like struggling and i felt really i don't know I've always been very empowered, so it really surprised me to want to be submissive. <laughs> you 
you know. Well, and I mean, look, it, you know, if you know. found yourself, if you found yourself in a situation in which you're like, fuck, you know, look, I mean, you don't have to define your. Here's the thing: is you don't have to let any anything define you, right? Like, like, let's say you're thinking yeah. to yourself, you're like, you're like, you know what? I want to try it for a night. I found this guy and. You know, we're, we're both like, all right, we're going to do this thing. We got our safe word and all of that. And you're like, let's fuck it let, for a night. Let's try it. Let's try. I'll put on the maid outfit. And I'll let this guy tell me what to do. Fuck it. Let's try it. You try it. Okay. Okay. And then but, you see if you like he, it, you know, and if you're, like, if you're there and you don't like it, you stop and you're like, I don't want to do this again. Yeah. Okay. But you don't That's have to do it. It's like, really good but you're not, yeah. you're not, you're not making some definitive identity choice just by doing one thing once you know what i mean totally yeah that's a really good point and i think i feel like that a lot when i decide when i decide to go a certain way i feel like okay that's who i am now <laughs> right and <laughs> instead look, it of doesn't just have like to be trying like that. instead of just trying it out yeah yeah it sounds totally it right. sounds to me you're curious but you know i know you say you yeah. are, you always feel like you're empowered but i mean look i don't yeah. think there's any i don't but I, here's the thing is i don't think there's anything unempowering about pursuing this thing if you're interested in it you know what i mean i don't think i think that i think that what empowers yeah. people i think that what truly empowers people is the agency for them to fucking make their own decisions you know and I yeah. actually think what would I actually yeah. think so that right. this uh, this this label that you're tr that you know you're when it's like oh if I do this I'm like I'm a sub or I'm this I'm that I'm yeah. whatever you know the label yeah. is gonna chain you down it's gonna the label is what's depowering you you know what I mean because because then you're chained to the to this label of whatever you decided to consider yourself and that's what's gonna take away your power the labeling not the actual thing of whatever you're doing you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> I'm so glad I got to like get through to you. <laughs> Five for sure, dude. I hope you have a good time. Yeah, man. Thank you. Anytime. Have Take a good care. night. Bye. Hello. Hello. What's up? Oh, hey, <laughs> hey, Gak. How you doing? Happy Friday. I'm good. I want to talk to you about. Uh, I read the notes on your screen, and it said that you are you're a taxidermist. Uh, I am not a taxidermist. But you wanted to honestly, talk about the ethics point, of taxidermy. Yeah, absolutely, and I think at this point it is a much more interesting, uh, much more interesting field than I thought it was. It seems like an excellent career choice for anyone that's pursuing it. Okay, but, well, tell me. I want to know um, more important, most importantly, what are your op opinions on the um, cat skeleton controversy between uh, Courtney and Alex? Yeah, you know, I think going back to that conversation, it, what you want to do with your cat is, you know, beyond me beyond anyone else's decision. I think more importantly, it is a personal decision. If you can live with it, go for it. Um, for me, I don't think it's really my decision. I don't think I would choose that. I don't think you would choose that. Um, so what do you, all right, but yeah, what do you think I, about the yeah. baby thing? What do, what do you think about taxidermized, taxidermizing the kid? Is that too far? Honest, going into the logistics of that, it seems a lot more difficult than just, you know, being a feasible option. You know, there, there's a lot of, I think it's a more, um, not so solid as a full-sized, uh, you know, human or a cat might be. So I think taxidermying, ta taxidermisting a baby would be much more difficult than, you know, taxidermizing an actual full-sized human. Plus, I think they have much more brittle bones. So I think trying to, you know, wire that whole mesh system together is, you know, just much more difficult than you know, a cat or a human. I was more so asking about the morality of it than the logistics of it, but that's a oh, funny yeah, answer yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, you know, with the morality of it, is, is, is the baby already dead at this point? 
Yes, no, you she wouldn't be killing the baby to to accidentally. Okay, it. so I I didn't kill it. Somebody else did. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I, you know, I think legal issues aside, you know, go for it. You know, I, you know, I don't think I have to answer to a higher power. I don't, I don't know if they have to answer to a higher power. Whatever you got to do, you know, I go for it. You know. Are, are you a? Do you follow a? You know, whatever fills the greater good. I don't think it really affects anyone else but your own morality. You know, if you have a problem with it, then that's your fault. You know, you got to deal with it. But you know, it's not going to affect your neighbor. It's not going to affect the guy down the street. You know, it's not going to affect somebody else. But totally. Um, well, thank you so much for your perspective. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have a good rest of the night. Uh, you too. I will have a fantastic night. Hello? Hello, Mr. Gack. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Um, I am I am a gecko. What's up with you? Tell me everything. Tell me nothing. You are. You are a gecko. Um, so... I'm a professional wrestler, which I think is pretty interesting because, you know, how many people get to say that? You're a professional wrestler. Yeah, like, you know, when you uh, turn on the TV and you see, like, WWE with, like, John Cena and stuff like that? That's what what I do. Oh, okay. So you're one of the not famous professional wrestlers. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Okay, how, what's, what, what do you, uh, what do you look like? Describe yourself to me physically. Um... I, I I I don't know. I uh I'm known as like a pretty boy. Uh I don't know, I have a big cheesy smile. I'm pretty muscular. I also do bodybuilding and stuff like that. But I'm also like young, so like I, a lot of times when people see just my face, they think you're like, "Oh, you're 18." But then when they see like my body, they're like, "Oh, you're like 26." But I'm actually in the middle. I'm 22. Mm. Okay, so you're so you're a very very pretty man, um, uh, and I'm not that. Th- are guess. you in the WWE? No, I actually have lots of friends who are both in the WWE and AEW. What are you in? Uh, I just wrestle like around the Midwest. And when like, you say I wrestling, are wrestled- we talking like? Because I know I don't know anything about wrestling, but I do know that there's like. WWE like theater wrestling and then there's like you know real wrestling which one are you no this is like but it, it's not like real it's the one where it's like okay so we go in the back and we talk about who wins and then we go out there and we like put on a show you know like people have characters right, sure, and stuff sure. like that sure, and sure, all that interesting jazz okay have you ever hit someone on the back of the head with a chair first question um, yes, I have. Not on the, okay, so, like, whenever you do stuff, it's, like, supposed to look real, but, like, not actually, like, you know, kill someone. So, if you hit somebody on the back of the head with a chair, you would probably, like, kill them. But, like, there's ways to do stuff where you, like, don't mess people up. So, a lot of times, when you see people get hit in the head with a chair, they put a hand up, unless they're, like, absolutely insane, and they'll just take it square on, but, like... They don't really do that anymore because there's been one too many concussions and, you know, people having life altering injuries because of that. Mm. Mm. Um, hmm. So what's your persona? You said you're a pretty boy. Are you a villain? Are you like a uh, there's a name for these kinds of characters, the ones that like you're supposed to hate the villain. Yeah. The yeah, name? they're What's called the a heel. There's a face and a heel. So, um, I'm a heel, so I'm a bad guy. Oh, so, like, okay. I'll go out there, and uh, that's when you, like, you know, yell at the crowd and get people to boo you. And basically, the entire point of us is to make the good guy look better. Uh, so, it's like, you know, it's interesting because in real life, I'm actually a pretty nice guy. <laughs> and I'm not 
really mean whatsoever but as soon as i go to like the curtains for an entrance it's like i'm a completely different person and i can't help myself but be like really mean that's how i feel about um you know being a gecko just can't help myself exactly you know but be really mean you're just uh you're just <laughs> Yeah, I, honestly, when you like, when you're like, hey, so you're not one of the famous ones. I was like, oof, oof. Well, you know, it's all just a character, except when it's not, and oh, I mean it. But one... tell me, tell me, wh- tell me more about your villainous persona. Like, why, why, what do people do to get you to, 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 to what do you do to get people to boo you? You know, what's your, you're a pretty boy. Are you like, is your whole thing that you're like stuck up? You're like, uh, this, yeah. this trust so fund like super... kid and what, tell me, tell me more. So it's like, I'm super narcissistic. So I go out there and I basically just tell people that I'm more attractive than they are and that they're ugly and like a bunch of mouth breathers and, uh, ugly and stuff like that. And I tell people to shut up and like when I eventually lose, which I normally lose because people like to see me lose, I throw like temper tantrums. Like I will literally lay on my stomach and kick my feet and stomp and scream and like cry and stuff like that, you know, just uh, it's my stereotypical like who would I hate the most? Like how would I really just want to punch someone in the face? Who would that be? And I am that person when I wrestle and it's great. Hmm. Can we hear a little bit of it? Would you like pretend like the chat is like the crowd? Could we hear like how you would well, rile up our chat? Well, honestly, everybody in the chat is telling me that I'm fake, but they're just angry because they're sitting at home all day, uh, you know, just eating food, mouth breathing, doing nothing exciting with their lives, being lame, being ugly, upset with their lives while I'm out here leaving my best life doing everything that I can to, you know, just be better than them. And they're just upset about it. Mm. You know? Mm. Tell, tell, tell us more about how you're better than the chat. What what else makes you better than the chat? Um, well, the fact that most people who sit on Twitch all day obviously have nothing better to do with their lives because why would you just sit around and watch someone do something interesting when you can go out and do something interesting yourself? But instead, they're just sitting there talking about how I'm fake. And honestly, their entire life is a lie. And, you know, they're pathetic and weak and they have nothing to better do with their lives. They need to get themselves a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but we all know that they'll never be able to do that because, you know, they're just weak, pathetic virgins and, you know, a bunch of insults. Ooh, it's working. You're getting booed. You're you're pretty good at this. I, I am getting booed. It's a great time. You know, honestly, I deserve it. They all, uh, you know, they're all just weak-minded, feeble imbeciles. And me, I'm fantastic. I think I'm an amazing person. And this is the point where if I could, I w- I'd, I'd hit you on the head with a chair. Yeah, dude, I would. What, Deck, if you ever came to Chicago again... I would 100% let you hit me with a chair. Holy shit! If I'm ever, if I do a live show in Chicago again, that we're doing that. Uh, you got you. You can teach yeah, me I how to, to do go- the fucking wrestling thing. We'll do that shit again. Dude, 100%. Honestly, when you came to Chicago the first time, I wanted to do that, but then um, your uh, show sold out in literally like 10 seconds. And I cried to myself. And then you like got a bigger oh, venue or a change venues or something like that. Yeah. But I was yeah. at work and I couldn't do it. it. Made me sad. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. And when I when I say, uh, does anyone want to come up to the audience or whatever, you got to come up and t- with bring a chair. Dude, I hey. will. I will bring a chair myself. Yeah. Do you, by the way, do you talk in this voice? Do you like not change your voice at all? Oh no, I like. So I don't want to be really loud because I have other people in my house. But normally when I do it, I do this like really high pitched screaming. Like it's very shrill. And also like I just don't want to destroy your ears if I do this. Oh, go for <laughs> so it. I don't care. I'm not actually. So like if I'm like, hey, that's not nice. 
like that. I can hear my dad laughing. But it's wait, can like you that. wait? Can you can you um, repeat again how everyone in the chat is a virgin, but just do it in that voice? You want me to specifically say everybody in the chat chat is a bunch of virgins? Yeah, but do, but in that voice. Like okay, uh, okay, I can do it. Everybody, everybody should be scared. So he lives with his parents. Yes, I do because I'm a child. I'm literally 21. But anyway, yes, I live with my parents. Who do you think I am? I'm literally 21. I am 21, and I've done more in my life than you have ever done in your life. You guys are just sitting around being a bunch of virgins. <laughs> Man, I gotta, I gotta come <laughs> see one of your fucking wrestling shows. That sounds hilarious. Dude, do it. It's it's pretty funny, honestly. Like watching me get beat up, I think is a great time. Fuck yeah! Where 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 can I see a show? Where is it all in Chicago? Um, yeah, I'm in like Chicago and Wisconsin and Indiana, um, Michigan sometimes. Okay, uh, respect. Yeah, dude, you can even, like, watch my videos on YouTube and stuff. It's a great time, man, let me tell you. Fuck yeah. What's what's the name of the league? The le Well, there's, like, a bunch. So, like, the big ones that I wrestle at are, like, called, like, Warrior Wrestling. Uh, that's, like, the one of the biggest ones in Chicago. Uh, I've wrestled at Freelance a few times. Chicago Style Wrestling, Berwyn Championship. There's just a bunch. Well, fuck yeah, man. Well, Everybody's asking for my YouTube. Fuck it. So what's the YouTube? I want to hear it. Well, okay. So, like, to find me, if you just look up Ryan Matthews Wrestling, like R-Y-A-N-M-A-T-T-H-E-W-S. Matthews. Of course your name's me. fucking Ryan Matthews. Yeah, dude. Pretty That's boy Ryan Matthews. That's the name of a, of, a, of a skinny pretty boy. Yeah, dude. It's like, it's, it's like, you know what, your stereotypical, like, Chad, like, when you were in high school, and there's that one dude that was just kind of like a total douchebag. Sure. That's like, that would be his name. And that's Ryan, my name. you know, I'm going to be, by the way, I'm going to look for a YouTube channel later, and if there's not a video of you getting hit on the head with a chair, I'm going to be pissed off. I don't think there's any videos of me getting hit in the head with a chair, but. You better upload one uh, soon before I, before the stream ends. Oh, man. Uh, I guess. Ooh, they said I sound breedable, you know? All right, Honestly, we're ending this yeah, now. Thank little. you very much for calling in, Ryan. You have a good rest of the night. <laughs> Thank you. You too, buddy. Yellow. Hi, Gecko. What's up, dude? What's up? How are you feeling tonight? Um, you know, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Um, what's up with you? Tell me everything. Tell me nothing. <laughs> I'm chilling with my dog in my minivan right now. I <laughs> I had a very good conversation with a person who like, takes your calls before you. But um, I was talking about how I moved a little bit over a thousand miles away. And my minivan was just me and my dog, so it was like kind of crazy, you know, moving to a place to a different state with nobody around, really. Mm. But it's been really crazy. It's been, it's like the best part of my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're living the van. I'm 22, so it's like, yes, but not like. There's like a trans van life, you know, like the Promaster vans, like fully renovated, which are beautiful. And I love them. And it's like my goal maybe to one time own one too. But I'm like the beginner, you know, just in my minivan. I did everything myself, like built out the best you can in a minivan. But minivan is a lot bigger than you think. It's can I ask where you... A Can I ask where you're things. calling from? Where is the uh, where's the van right now? Van right now in Colorado. Colorado, okay. And you got everything you need in that I minivan. Know. Exactly, like literally anything except for groceries right now because it's been really hot, and I've just been eating fast food or like quick things. 
but when the weather gets colder, I can cook in my van. I have like a supply of water, which in van life you never pay for water. You always have to find free water, a clean one. But yeah, I have everything. Everything I own is in this van. And it changed my perspective on life, you know, in a good way, like in a very good way. How has it changed your perspective on life? Um, I think materialistic things weigh us down sometimes, you know, or create this fear of change. Or like for me, because I have a lot of anxiety and change is scary, you know, especially when you're doing it alone or far away from like people you love physically. And I feel a lot more free, like in the spirit, you know, like I'm not afraid to do things alone anymore because I enjoy being by myself. Like, I enjoy my own company, you know, like in that way. And knowing that I can literally go, like, I'm going into Wyoming in about um, a little bit over a week. And I'm going to be there for winter for like ski season. And I've never worked in a ski resort. So I'm like, crazy like life can be what you want it to be when you let go of bad things you know mm. and have you always how old are you you said you said you're 22 yeah have you always um you know been adverse to doing things alone um no not really i think i was always like I have a lot of social anxiety, so doing things alone for me was really scary just because I didn't know how to interact with people. But through forcing myself and like going out and getting like, you know, as a teenager, working in customer service, being a cashier, and I think English not being my first language also was like a big barrier, you know? So I didn't want to be always. Well, it's Russian. Mm. I know, so it was a lot different. But I love English, so I learned it. I I tried to learn it fast. So mm. that helped a lot. But, yeah, I used to really feel uncomfortable being alone. And I used to cling to people that were bad for me. And I just, I stayed because it was like, I don't want to be alone. Mm. But now... I feel a lot more empowered by myself. Mm. Mm. How long have you been living in the van for? Um, I was just counting recently. I think about a little bit over five months. About five months, you said? A little bit over, yeah. What were you, where were you living before you were living in the van? Were you living like with parents, roommates? I was living, well, right before I was living by myself. Um, but before that, I was living with my ex-boyfriend. So you have it was decided back in Indiana. that you're better off by yourself. Now, are you on the road? While you're on the road, are you completely alone or do you have these times in which you do get to like interact with other people whether they be other travelers or like you know i i i you said you were so you're going to be working at a ski resort in wyoming yeah okay so you're gonna be working with other people have you been meeting a lot of other travelers um i haven't really met a lot of like I've met, like, a few people, but they never, like, it's a lot of, I guess, small talk, and I'm a lot better at small talk than, like, keeping the friends after, because, like, I've met a few people that I try to be friends with, but I feel like I'm not... Like, I interact with people every day. Like, I'm not just in a desert somewhere. <laughs> I deliver, I do delivery driving. So, like, I see people every day. But I don't have, like, long-term connections here because 
even though I love talking to people, I don't really let a lot of people stay just because I just, I'm really bad at texting. So I, I can't, I just like, that's why I feel like I can't keep a lot of friends because I'll leave them on red for like two weeks and then I'll remember that I didn't respond and it'll be too late. And how has it been being alone? I think it's been really good because I was always like my biggest fear growing up was to be alone. Um, and when I now facing the fear, I think it's again the best thing in growth wise like has ever happened to me. Um, because it's not bad being alone, you know. You find like you get to know yourself. Because I don't think I really knew myself before this. And now, away from like, because I still like talk to my friends and my family from Indiana and stuff. But I can't just, they're not here every day like they used to, you know. So you get to kind of, it lets me develop my own personality. If I can, if that makes sense. No, that makes and a lot of like, sense. It, not. <laughs> A lot of healing time, you know? Yeah, it's very, very interesting how differently you develop when there's no one around. Because if you're constantly surrounded by your friends or your family, you know, a lot of your personality and perspective is shaped by them inherently. And when there's a lack of that external sort of stimulus and you're just sort of free to develop independently it you know paints a whole new person Definitely. what have you learned yeah. about yourself <laughs> um, I think I learned and accepted that <laughs> I don't know how to like put it into words that it Sorry, I'm just trying to put it so it makes sense in one sentence. I think it's the, like accepting that I don't want to go to college for anything because even though I was like not pressured to, but kind of pressured to because I don't really want anything that college can give me. Like I love to crochet and I have so much more time to do it now. And I started journaling, which I used to hate writing. So now I'm like, I'm discovering the more like art side of me. And it's really important to me because a family, like my family from Ukraine and Russia, they, my grandpa and my uncle, they were very, they were great painters, you know, just amazing. And growing up with them until I moved was like, such an inspiration but when I moved and you start growing up and it's like pressure of the money well you can't really make money with art so you better be a lawyer or an architect and you know stuff like that and I gave up on it and just jumped it down and I was very unhappy ever since but I'd never realized it and now I get to actually enjoy it and make things that I love and be proud of myself and be able to like wear a sweater knowing that it it wasn't really real until I took a hook in the yard and made a sweater like it's just in my head it's very trippy if that's the word because again before I started even living alone in my apartment for a year, I feel like I didn't really exist. You know, it was like I just gained consciousness recently. And I'm like, wow, life is crazy. <laughs> you know? Do you have some sort of ultimate goal or, or dream for yourself? 
I think so. I think it would be buying land somewhere in the mountains, just building myself a little home, making a garden, having my dog, maybe a few more <laughs> other dogs, and just live like in, in sustainable peace, if that makes sense, you know, like having my own solar, just live with the earth more and is more there connected. anything about this this new life of being sort of nomadic and on your own that has been um more difficult for you than how your previous life was probably going through like that separation from the people I love because I feel like sometimes there'll still be days when I'm like I really miss them but I know I can just like drive 30 minutes to see them and just being like grieving that part mm. until like and just reminding myself that I'll see them again you know not like I'm gone forever but that was probably the hardest part Well, you know, I I think it's uh I think that's awesome that you took some initiative to cuz it's very scary and a lot of people don't want to do it. A lot of people don't want to isolate themselves to sort of figure out who they are. You know, that's why that's that's like kind of a, a big reason why people find themselves in friendships that are bad for them or relationships that are bad for them because they're they're afraid of being alone. You know, and it's a fear that a lot of people, I think, struggle with. And um, but every time I hear from people and, and you know, I've, I've done this myself too. Uh, uh, you know, conquering that fear. You always end up better for it. I've seen. You always end up learning shit about yourself that you didn't learn or, or growing. I, I, I've always felt that way. I've always felt like growth takes place in isolation from other people. Um... And, and sometimes isolation from just really any sort of external influential stimulus, you know. So, what's your name was? My name is Yana. Yana. So, good for you, Yana. I'm glad to hear that, you've, that you're that <laughs> you developing. And, um, you know, I wish you luck as you continue your journey. Thank you so much. It was the first time talking with you, and it was just a very pleasurable experience, and I hope you have a beautiful fight and night. <laughs> Thank you very much, Yana. You have a good rest of the night. Thank you. Bye. Hello? Hello? Hello. Is this... Are, am I on? You're on. What? Oh my gosh. What's up, Jack? What's up? Uh, you know. The sky. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me turn the I'm up. crazy. It's 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 crazy gecko night. Ooh. Oh, this is <laughs> Nah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding, man. I'm just joking around. What's up with you? Not much, dude. Ha, ha, yeah. What's, what's happening? How's your night going? Well, what would you like to talk about? Um, well, I'm really nervous. Uh, so I had a, nah, uh, don't be. There's no one an embarrassing you. story to tell. Oh, tell me. <laughs> yeah, I have an, an embarrassing story that I could share. Hit me. Uh, okay, so to set the stage, I went to a really small school. Um, like, I graduated with 37 kids. And, like, in the whole high school, there was maybe 100 kids. Um, so, a really small school. And I was a junior, and it was during homecoming week. Like, you know the powder puff football where, like, the girls play flag football? I have. I've heard of that. 
Yeah. Um, so my friend and I were uh, coaching or try, attempting to coach them. I mean, it was halftime and we had this little whiteboard and I was just trying to write up some plays. And I mean, they weren't really paying attention, but um, this one of the girls comes up behind me and pulls my pants down. So I had sweatpants and this like new silk underwear that I had, but it didn't really fit right. And she pulled my underwear down with it. And so this was like in front of, like I, like I said, it was a small school. So basically all the like junior and senior girls saw my penis and it was a, uh, it was geck. It was a cold night that night. And how did this crowd of people so react when they saw your penis? They, uh, they just laughed. And probably, I don't know, I, I think I blacked out at that point. You blacked out? Um, but yeah, I'm sure they just... Well, I don't know, it's like really embarrassing. I, I, I wasn't really paying attention to what they were doing. I was like pulling my pants up. And, um, yeah, I bet they were just laughing, like covering their mouths. I bet they were embarrassed too. But mm. the girl who did it was just cracking up like it was a funniest thing ever the girl who did it did she intend scarred. to um like show your whole penis or just to the, the penis i hope and not the, the boxers intact yeah I, w I would think just the just the pants but like yeah because if i was wearing jeans i think well i don't know jeans are probably hard to be pants but yeah i don't know i don't i'd like to think that she wasn't trying to but maybe she was i, I haven't really thought about that hmm that's that and would be really what, bad. Well, what was your what's your relationship like with this girl? Are you guys friends? Like, you know, what gave her really the jurisdiction to to pants you like that? Um, so I haven't talked to her in uh, like a while. Just, I mean, we grow apart, but um, we were yeah, we were definitely friends then. Like, it, it wouldn't have been that it wouldn't have been that big of a deal if she had just de pants me. But I think she, I don't think that she planned to pull my underwear down too no but we, we were we and were then like i said it's the a really next small day school, at school so. the next day at school did people look at you <laughs> sort of weird and you know and you could sort of tell that they, <laughs> uh, sort of what your penis looked like <laughs> um uh i think i mean i i have i don't think it was that like probably i bet that it, people were talking about it the next day but I mean, when you go to a school that small, it's like everyone's kind of family. So everyone's it wasn't seen like each a... other's penis already at a school that small. <laughs> it's not even a big deal. Yeah, no. Yeah, I think I think we we we, we got past it uh, pretty quickly because I mean, it, mm. it's not like it was a a huge penis that would like engrave in their memories. Mm. See that's you know what I, I know that yeah, I know that you feel as women. though it's I know you know you said it was called out and your penis was shriveled and I know you're sort of making that as a point to make it more <laughs> embarrassing but you're right it makes it not as bad because people remember it le because your penis is so small people remember it less than <laughs> say if you had a huge penis you know people see your small penis on Friday yeah, and I mean, Monday they've forgotten huge... about it if you had a bigger penis I mean they would have you know been talking about that for years but it you know it's just you know becomes part of the news cycle if it's a small shriveled penis no, i think you're yours. exactly right um, <laughs> i mean that's you know that's a good thing yeah. you know that's 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 another example of turning a weakness into a strength you know everyone thinks it's bad to have a small penis but this is one of those one of those situations in which um you know it comes in handy yeah i think you're right i've never thought about it that way what did you say your name was? Yeah, uh, if I would have had a uh, Max. Max. Well, Max, uh, thank you for calling and sharing, and uh, I hope that this conversation was helpful for you in reframing uh, the past. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Gek. Love you. Anytime. Take care. Hello. Hello. What's up? Hello. Hi. How are you? How am I? Yeah. I'm a gecko. Oh. I kind of wish I was a gecko. We were told that your costume's only $60 on Amazon, so anyone could be, I guess. Why do you wish you were a gecko? 
so then it'd be easier. Well, maybe. You could climb up walls. That'd be fun. What would be easier? Being a gecko? Easier than being a human. How do you know that? You've never been a gecko. That's true. I did see a gecko, like, almost die this summer, so maybe it wouldn't be easier. Do you think my life is easier? No. Maybe not a therapy gecko. Because it kind of is. I would probably would just be like a... It's kind of hard. <laughs> you know, you make a lot of assumptions. Sorry. I'll try to stop. You know, it's not easy being green. It's not easy being green? Yeah, you know. I gotta, I, have to, I gotta eat bugs. Yeah. You ever eaten a bug? I have eaten a bug. Did you like it? No. I was picking legs out of my teeth. Well, there we go. Imagine if you had to only eat bugs. Wouldn't be that easy. Yeah, probably not. I don't think I'd like that. What did you want to talk Is about? Is there a question this week? Okay, so... We called because I'm with one of my friends, and we didn't know what the question was, but we have a story. Well, we have a couple stories, but we have one that's do, embarrassing, the and one. then we have like a just the one. We'll do the the one that what you said. There's one that's embarrassing, and one that's what. One that's embarrassing, and then we have one that's like a near death situation, but we called about the embarrassing one because that was recent. Oh, let's do the embarrassing one. Okay, <laughs> I don't know where to start with this. So, earlier this week, um, <laughs> well, I'm actually the friend I'm with, he's part of it, so I'm sure he would be open to talking to you about it too. <laughs> but we, <laughs> we're doing the dirty, <laughs> as you do, and um, he decided to video it. And this was on Snapchat, so, like, the save button is right next to the post button. Um, and <laughs> we posted it. And uh, how did people react? So, apparently it was only up for five minutes. But I got, like, frantic text messages telling me, like, Oh shit, you gotta delete your story. But everybody was like surprisingly nice. I don't know who I don't know who else saw it. I think it was less than twenty people, but <laughs> by the way, bad... I my you know what my strongest um Th you know what I really don't like about this story is I don't why do people I guess I I've seen pe people do this now. Where instead of using their photo app to take photos, they always yeah. use their Snapchat app and then save it. That's, I I think. I know. Why it's would a you bad do? Idea. Why would you do that? If you're especially if you're gonna take a video of yourself having sex, like just use the yeah. camera app. I know. Like thinking back on it, I feel so dumb. I don't know why. Like it would have happened that way. It was just like. I don't know. I, it's just like no thought went into it at all. Do you think anyone saved the video? Huh? Do you think anyone saved the video? I don't think so. But like when I realized what happened, I was so panicked. I like, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like I blacked out and I was so anxious to delete it that I didn't really check. Because it tells you when somebody like screen records or screenshots. But, um, I didn't notice that. I don't think Is so. Is blacking though. out from embarrassment a thing? I'm, I'm learning about this today. I think it is. It's happened to me more than once. They're asking for an age check. 19. Well... 
good luck with your life. Yeah, thanks. Everyone's saying it's a lie. I don't care what people say about anything. You know, but people say things on the internet all the time. People say that things are lies and that it's, it's all noise. Even me talking right now, it's yeah. just noise. Everything is just a bunch of fucking noise yeah. all the time. True. I know I gotta learn that. Perfect. Have a good rest of the night, Sarah. Thank you. Hello? Uh, hello? What's up? Is this the Gak? This is a Gak. What's up, man? Uh, I found you on Spotify, actually, which is funny. Um, your podcast popped up on my front page, and I thought, wow, this is a funny concept. You're saying this is funny? Yeah, it's a good concept. Thank you. It's good what you do for people. It's good that you could uh, let people come here and vent and talk about shit, you know? Totally. I know I stole the idea from some other guy. So I pre- I'm glad that um, you like it. it um, I would say it took me a lot of effort to come up with, but I, I totally stole it from someone else. And he's, you know, he's dead now. So it's just me. Did you kill him? What would you like to talk about? Uh, so I was listening to your podcast. I don't remember the episode, but you said that you didn't like high school relationships or relationships that, like, went out of high school. I wanted to know why. Um, relationships that went out of high school. Uh, uh, what do you What do you mean exactly? Like, like people in like, high school I, in relationships or relationships that extend outside of high school like i meant like getting in a relationship in high school and then it going years past if that makes well i mean look i i you know i i don't know i don't know a damn thing here about love you know but uh i've had many people you know call in and be like hey you know i met my boyfriend when i was a, a junior in high school and we've been together for you know 45 years and i'm like that's fantastic i i I'm not an authority whatsoever on anyone else's happiness. Um, but, I mean, it sounds like you're asking me this. This sounds like this comes from a personal thing. Is Are you in a relate? Are you, how old are you? Uh, I'm 23. You're 23. Are you ask? are you in a relationship yeah. with someone that you've been with since high school? No, I actually just got out of a relationship with someone that I met in high school. Uh, okay. We were dating for like five years. And it just okay. How was it? So, I think it was pretty good, but you know, okay. you never know what the other party is thinking. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Well, I mean, do you? So, look, you well, look, those five years, did you enjoy them? Yeah, I enjoyed them. Did you make good memories? Are you fond of the time that you spent with the person? Yeah, definitely. Beautiful. And you're 23 now. You have uh, many, many years to meet many more people and do many more exciting things and uh, create even fonder memories. Or not even fo- not not even fonder memories. Memories that are fond in and of themselves, not in comparison to other fond memories. You know. So look, it seems like everything worked out for you. So, you know, what a gecko guy on the internet thinks about relationships in high school or whatever is irrelevant to, you know, any sort of real world examples of anything. Um, It seems like things are, you know, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear you don't mourn the time you spent. Yeah. Uh, Another thing, a lot of people call in and ask about going and doing stuff like I want to get out of my town or my city. I want to go do something, but oh, I yeah. think I'm too, you know, too had tethered here sometimes. So I feel. What's what's tethering you? Um, I run a small operation with my pops, so it's like kind of the livelihood of the, the family, 
and you're a drug dealer. It's not like a job that. No. Not drug dealers. Um, but you know he can't do that alone. But you know it's hard. He's old. Can't really find another job. Mm -hmm. Uh, so kind of want to like go out and do something for myself. Go work somewhere. How long have you been working with your dad? Like out of state. Like years. You can't hire. Well, look. Uh, so you're saying you're tethered because uh, you want to stay with your dad to help him out because he's he's too old to run the thing himself, right? Yeah. Why don't? Um, well, I mean, there's a few things. First of all, look. I think it's very nice that you want to be there for your dad. I I, I sympathize with that. I think that that's really nice. But if you've been doing it for years and you're like. Ah, I've gotten to a point where, like, I love my dad. I love, I even love doing what I'm doing with him. But, hey, dad, all you know that money that you're giving to me to do this thing? Give it to another 23-year-old kid. I'm getting out of here, you know? Do that. Yeah. Have him hire idea. someone else. That's the beauty. Is that everything that you're doing, you can just train someone else to do. It's true. Go out into the world. Realize that um, everywhere in the entire world is exactly the same. There's no perspective to be gained from traveling. You know, everywhere is just, you know, a McDonald's and a gas station. And then come back and, um, you know, to play video games or something. But you gotta, but you can't experience that just by me telling it to you. You gotta go figure that out on your own. That That's a good point. Everything is, is useless. Gak, do you smoke weed? Have a good rest of the night, Sam. Thank you for calling. Hello? Hello? What's up? Oh, Gak, man. I got, uh... I think I got something for you. Hit me. P p slap me in the face with it. Ugh, yeah, so, Shoot um... my ass. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that, but... Let me hit it. Let me hit you with it. Uh, so I met this girl on this uh, dating app today. Uh, she wanted me to come over tonight, uh, but she said some kind of sketchy things. So I don't know if it's the uh, the right move. She, you met a girl on a dating app, and she wants you to come over tonight. Uh, that's that's correct. Yeah. By the way, can you turn stream off for me? Because I can, I can hear myself. Yeah, I just turned it off. My bad. Cool. No, it's all good. Um. Okay. What? And you just you did you just meet her today? Yes. It, it within the matter matter of about four hours. She uh she wanted me to come over. Okay. And what sort of sketchy things did she say? So I said, yeah, like um, my roommate's not here right now. You can come over to my place, and she uh. Oh, well, I got in a car accident or whatever. So I can't drive. I uh, don't have a car right now. And she also said, yeah, you know, if you want to, like, help me out with paying for my car, I'd appreciate it. And I uh, I told her no. Uh, and she's like, oh, okay, that's fine. But I, I still see that as a pretty big red flag. You see it as a red flag? Like, she wanted you to help pay for her like she wanted you to, like pay for an uber to your place or like you pay what what, what no, exactly like, did she asked you to pay to, for to fix her car basically she wanted me to help uh, pay to fix her car to fix her car because there's an okay i think that's a, that's a reasonable uh uh request that's a reasonable uh request to decline i would say yeah yeah um and so she was I mean, I, her yeah, place? I said no Yes. Yeah. And you're what? And you're sketched out that about the fact that she asked you to help pay to fix her car. I mean, yeah, and it's also the sketchy part of town. It's not somewhere I would, you know, want to be. Uh, I look like she's. And when I asked her to send me her address, she said like it's around this area. Start driving like this way. I'm like, uh, you know. Can I just get, uh, just get the address? 
I saw that as another uh, kind of kind of red flag. So was the idea that you were going to like what Venmo her money and then she was gonna? What time is it where you are? Uh, well, this is probably like seven. I mean, she said, you know, I'm I'm, I'm free tomorrow too. So there's still the potential, uh, you know. So the, tomorrow, okay, so I was gonna say the idea but, is she like, brings her car to the shop, and then with the money you gave her, and then goes to your place. Uh, well, no, okay, so. You see, we would, uh, I would go to her her place tomorrow, whatever. We would do our thing, and I guess she, for doing, you know, you know what two people do when they're alone together, you know, that we would kind of have a good time. Uh, and then I guess after the good time, she would request payment, at which, you know, I, I told her, you know, I'm not willing to pay, but she still that, wanted that me to like come over. That sounds like prostitution. Yeah, you see, that, that's why I said no. I said no, I'm not willing to pay, and then she still said, "Come over." But I, I just feel uncomfortable because she asked me to pay. That's reasonable. Um. So yeah, I mean, look, if this person's making you feel uncomfortable, then I think, uh, you know, look, I'm sure there's plenty of other lovely people waiting for you on the Tinder app. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe maybe go talk to one of them. Yeah. Uh, no, I, that's, I feel like that's some healthy advice. For sure. For sure. How much did you, by the way, I'm just curious, you know, yeah. how much money did she want to pay for your car? She, there was no amount specified. It was just, you know, uh, you know, I'm down on my luck. I could use some money. Okay. What um, what were you gonna say to me before I interrupted you by asking you how much she was asking you for? Um, no, I was uh, just gonna reiterate how much I appreciate your uh, your generosity with helping me out over here. Oh, of course, man. Of course, man. Um, you know, I uh, I think I think uh, you got to think of it like. You know, fuck yes or no, right? You know, if something's, if you got a bad feeling about something, yeah, just don't do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Follow those gut feelings. Nothing's worth, uh, yeah, it's not worth getting, uh, getting stabbed over or something like that, you know? You were afraid she was going to stab you. That could happen. Who knows? Well, I mean, that, you know, any, any, exactly. mis- any That's, number you, you of really miscellaneous don't know. things can happen when you go to a stranger's house. So. Especially when you met them four hours ago. So, yeah. Beautiful. Well, stay safe, man. Thank you for calling. No, I appreciate you uh, You taking that last call and getting me on here. Anytime. Take care, man. Call from... Brian. Thank you. Have you ever gotten in trouble? You know, actually, I kind of do have a good story. I have gotten in trouble. Okay, so one time, um, me and my family, we go to the, like... Okay, so I would go to Vegas. I'm from Miami, and I would go to Vegas to go see, like, my dad and my aunt. And then one day, um, with my aunt and my aunt's side of my family, um, we would fly back to Miami, but, like, to the Keys area. Um, So I'm there with a bunch of family, and they take us out on a boat to, like, a little, like, private island. And I have to be, like, 10 or 11, and I had to, like, shit really, really bad. Um, and I'm going out and my, I tell my uncle, I'm like, Hey, and my uncle like knows the Island. He knows the people on the Island too. It's like, you know, like a little nice little, it's not like super fancy. It's just like a nice little spot. And, um, I tell him like, yo, like I have to shit really bad. And he says, well, just go by the bushes. And I tell him like, no, I don't want to do that. Cause you know, I don't know. Like I didn't have nothing to wipe with. So I don't know why, maybe because I was 10, but I go and I shit in the water thinking it would sink because in a toilet sometimes it just sinks. I don't know if that has to do with the density in the water, but yeah, it floats up so everybody sees my shit and my uncle's super embarrassed and he's just super pissed at me that I embarrassed. 
him in front of everybody. And it was a really long boat, like a boat ride back to the shore, you know. And how did you feel about the floating shit? You know, I'm not going to lie to you, Gak. It might be a little vulgar. It was really big. Like, I wasn't kidding when I had to take a shit. It was really massive. And I felt so relieved after, though. Part of me felt a little okay that I got in trouble for it, if I'm being honest. So you were proud of it? Yeah, I guess I'd say so, yeah. It was, um... It was, like, almost, like, therapeutic, I'd say. That's nice. Yeah. It was, um... It wasn't the best trip back, so I'll tell you what. I got a... There was a lot of yelling from all of the elders on that boat ride. But I had cousins with me, and they were, um... They were like, hey, man, you know, I was, uh... It was pretty bold, you know. What was the you shat in the bucket of water? What was the bucket of? What was, what was, what was no? Was it wasn't. Water? It wasn't like a bucket. It wasn't a bucket of water. It was like a little like we left the shore to go like to an island, and it was like around. It was. It was like it was on the shore of the island that we went to, and I tried to go as deep as I could, but it wasn't that deep because I mean I was like ten. I don't think I. I just I don't know. I just didn't go that far off. But I just I basically shot in the ocean. And um Yeah, he uh Yeah, everybody saw it. Oh, and the turd flew and the turd washed up onto the shore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it wasn't that far off. Like everybody could see it like very well. I immediately my uncle like kind of saw it and he pulled me to the side and said, um yeah, dude, get the fuck on the boat. Like, and we all just left actually after that because you know, I mean, it was kind of embarrassing. Did any animals come to eat the turd afterwards? You know, I wasn't around for that part. Um, but you know, maybe, maybe it's the whole cycle of life thing. Maybe I actually did a good job doing that. You know? Yeah, sounds like you gave back to the community. Yeah, I don't know. I think that might. I don't like look thinking about it. I've never thought of it like that, but maybe it's like a, I don't know. Maybe it's like my purpose or something. Could be. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. No, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate your stream. Love you, Gek. <laughs>